Some days I wake up and I feel like making it everyone else's problem. For me, spite isn't an emotion, it's a sport, and it's a sport I intend to win. What better way to burden the rest of the world with my skipped over angsty teenage phase than by trauma dumping my experiences to my subscriber suggested builds over the internet? Welcome to Stupid Builds. Before we begin, feel free to suggest a build below in the comments for me to mercilessly berate like a tiger mom at their kids' participation award ceremony. Of course, after you press the subscribe button, you'll have to work for my roast. Lastly, I will link my favorite build from this video in the Mobilytics link in the description, so check that out once we are done to see what I secretly ended up enjoying the most. Titans are getting an unbelievable amount of flack for generally sucking at existing. To be fair, when hunters can pull two hydrogen bombs out of the pants, of course everything else looks like a pile of suck. This build did its damnness not to suck. Our build creator Misfit sent their Titan over to the prom like a freshman that concerningly smelled like lotion. This build ran the unbreakable aspect with the Dregner's Lash with a thruster. Fun fact, did you know that while using the Dregner's Lash on thruster, this makes the Warlock's Wander aspect tangle ball that suspends enemies near its detonation? On an unrelated fact, did you know that it's surprisingly easy to accidentally shoot a slow-moving enemy tangle out of the air? Anytime I tried to actually do the wombo combo of stuffing a shield down my opponent's throat like a live leak version of Captain America, then dodge back praying for my balls to lock the opponent in the air, I often ended up finding myself with the same feeling of disappointment I got from looking at the presidential candidates. While on paper, you can stun like enemies like playing a Nintendo game with a thousand ping online, in reality, you end up looking like you're performing the mating dance of a prismatic titan. Such a rare, beautiful specimen. It's a shame it's going extinct. At least the build crafter was kind enough to leave me a weapon. <sighs> right. This... This is a stick. While I firmly hold to the belief that the Crucible is best experienced with people who don't give a shit and actually try to have fun, using a glaive is like enabling hard mode. While everyone else is playing Space Magic Halo, you are playing Elden Ring. I have been a proponent of the funny sticks in the past, but most of the time it's because the build made good use of them. This build tried, but often ended up eating dirt. I spotted an exploit in Misfit's build suggestion, which made this slightly better. He allowed me to run whatever exotic glaive I liked, and thankfully the Vex Caliber is surprisingly solid in PvP. One shot from the melee and one shot from the actual blast will guarantee a kill. But even with all this, my opponents still tried their best to crush me into a bloody pace. My only solace was the last line in Misfit's message, which read, sorry if this gets you killed more than this works. Well. It, it, it didn't work, but I at least kind of pulled an okay game at the end, so I count this as an absolute win. Ultimately, the build performed fine, but it was like trying to drive a race car with your teeth. I gave this build a 6 out of 10 for heavily relying on the funny gimmick for the score, and its best stat, of course, being defense. Oh, but one Vex Caliber build apparently was not enough for you sickos, as Jack Frost decided to write a small, dickens-sized novel for this Hunter build. After getting through dissecting the requirements of this build like it was an 8th grade math class word problem, I decided that the actual intent of this build was to make the titans look bad again by being somehow more tanky than them. The build stacked as much DR, that's damage resistance for us cool people, as possible, namely the renewal grasp slice on a hand cannon, the aforementioned glaive, and a void overshield. I was promised an effective health pool of 2300! which for perspective would have been more health than almost two full raid teams combined. Didn't we end up getting that much health? No, of course not. I feel like I'm owed some type of compensation if you or a loved one were diagnosed with having to read a fuck all sized wall of text for a build premise that ultimately doesn't work, then you may be entitled to compensation. Thankfully for the effectiveness of this build, it is physically impossible for Prismatic Hunter to be bad. No, really, I dare you, go. Go make a Prismatic Hunter that is objectively bad. You can't. The worst you can make is like, just okay. Anyway, stylish execution, Winter Shroud in the exotic class items with the Renewal Grass and Sir Arachne's Facade. To absolutely no one's surprise, being able to survive more bullets means you often end up winning fights so thusly, I won most of my fights. A lot of them, no, don't get ahead of yourself, but Good, good portion of them. Throwing down a double buff damage resisting bubble of fuck you also allows you to cheese more fights than the flavor blasted goldfish in a gang fight with the nacho Doritos. Even still, anyone not running threaded specter in PvP is simply playing the hunter wrong, as I've seen this aspect net more cheated wins than Vok and Gangster during his peak of his career. Also, insert anything I said negative about the glaive from the last build into here. Just to make sure I was reminded of the constant low hum of anger which looms in the back of my mind, Bungie thought it'd be damn funny if they put with this decidedly close range weapon setup on yet another long range map. I often felt like I was trying to fire nerf darts at my opponents or I was forced to slink around corners to get into close range, but not too close range because shotguns can still one shot most glaives. 
Thankfully, God let my spiteful schemes find success. Hysterically, more success than the last build despite the similarities. I love a good weird setup, but rarely did I find myself being thankful for this build. There is a high likelihood that I simply need to get better. A skill issue, if you would. But I'll be damned if this setup felt more off than it was on. Remember kids, just like in real life, Math isn't real. Don't let Jack Frost lie to you. Fortunately for you, Jack Frost, you are still on Prismatic Hunter with Mathematically makes you better than Titans. Sorry, Titans. Bungie will eventually remember you exist. Eventually, hopefully, maybe. I don't know. 6.5 out of 10 and shocking absolutely no one the best status defense. So we have a Titan build trying to suspend like a Warlock, a Hunter build trying to tank like a Titan. What about a Warlock trying to nuke like a Hunter? This build would have absolutely worked better if I had the correct roll on the exotic class item. Full stop. In fact, this build may have been a top tier contender in the larger scale game modes had I had this correct setup. Keeping this in mind, this Warlock build from Ben still kicked several asses simultaneously. The bread and butter of this build was the class item with the Necrotics and the Synthos together. This affront to God was combined with a Cold Snap Grenade, Arcane Needles for three charges, Devour, and Lightning Surge because of course it was. Of course it was. I feel like a build like this should get you put on a list somewhere. I'm not entirely certain what kind of list, but this this kind of this kind of behavior requires documentation. For the hunter mains in the back, the goal of this build was to commit repeated and various heinous war crimes. Triple school bus sized arc bombs that are double damage boosted to guarantee that no one is left alive once your melee energy is spent. Thankfully for the safety of the sheetrock nearest my opponent's seat, I didn't have to send those on this slipsism roll, but even still, I was able to rip and tear like I was playing Doom on a digital display on a chainsaw. This build allowed for us to either use the Monte Carlo or the Traveler's Chosen for exotic weapons. I tried both and found the flexibility of the Monty to be generally better for the setup. I I really don't know how many more ways I can explain a build that is made entirely of a gimmick of strapping a nuke to my chest and making everyone else deal with it. To my Titan friends, I understand you better now. I feel like we bonded over this experience. My only wish is to simply do what I did, but harder, better, faster, and quite possibly stronger. Nothing is more satisfying than vibe checking an entire room of people with one button. 7 out of 10. Best statin, of course, offense. And now a question for you. Do you often find yourself wanting to trade in any one of your teammates for more bullshit with which you can fling at your enemy? Me too. And Yuji Jack suggested a build that allowed us to both have our cake and eat it too. Stacking as many summonable buddies as humanly possible. Getaway artist, no time to explain, Helion in the Bleak Watcher, and just simply repeat this mantra. I am my own raid team, and you look like a DPS cycle. My major fear was that this build would sacrifice form over function, putting too much into the comedy of being a one-man army, rather than these four various preschool children actually getting along. Thankfully, if it's one thing that kids are good at, it's violence. Each buddy pulled their own weight easily, with everyone providing something different to my damage rotation. The getaways were up the most frequently and helped pepper damage to most fights, as well as providing me an amplified buff, which helped me when my ADHD demanded that I get back to the pretty colors and the funny sounds faster. The no times was up the least frequently, but besides providing me clairvoyance to the ever-present smokescreen of bullshit that is Prismatic Hunter, the damage output was superb. Helion was not a fan of the low-hanging doorways, but when it did have the space to fire, it often found their mark and left them reeling from the intense burst damage and scorch. Lastly, the Bleak Watcher was often used as a scout around corners as its range is small, its damage is low, but its independence is quite high. The build creator also forgot about the inbuilt synergies between the no time and any form of stasis buff, which rewarded us with even more overall power to our no time to explain. I unironically could see this build being used in higher tier play as you can pretty much always place yourself in an advantageous position for bonus damage. This paired with a shotgun made it to where I always had answers. 8 out of 10, with the best stat being inconsistency. But what if you do actually want to make people hate you? Zist has you covered. Mask of Acris, Trespasser, the new AoE Grenade Launcher, Winter Shroud, and of course, no therapy session would be complete without Threaded Spectre. First things first, if I see you running this build in the wild, you are no longer invited to my birthday party. I wanted to say something more intense, but YouTube said no. But for the rest of you sadistic psychopaths out there, here's how to best optimize this build with full details for optimization. Are you ready? Okay. Dodge. That's it. That's the build. No, I'm, I'm being serious. Vaguely shoot in the direction of enemies, trespasser for up close, and lost signal for anything outside of that. Then just simply try to backrest dodge near 
and around enemies as much as possible. Someone at Bungie has watched too many episodes of Naruto and has a soft spot for the stupid ass auto win strand shadow clone jitsu freaking aspect. Take advantage of this. Trespasser is a fine exotic on its own, but when your enemy has taken any form of damage, its super burst suddenly becomes their conference call with God. Besides the clones themselves doing this work for you, you can snag this buff via your Bacchus's bonus damage. And you know how I know Bungie likes this aspect? Because we actually got the smallest map in the game for this build. I felt like oftentimes the build was playing itself and I was just simply a passive observer. The best part is that there is nothing deeper to understand. You're seeing the build. You get the gimmick. My only motivation to keep talking is to go through all my background footage that I have here. I started this video stating I want to make my spite other people's problems, and I feel like I have sparked at least four villain arcs this game. To make it up for you, I've arranged a professional voice actor to read some slam poetry. Archibald, please take it away. We are no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you, you know, how I'm feeling. Gonna make you understand. I'm never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down.